Now here's one of my favorite parts, energy grade lines and hydraulic grade lines. Grade lines represent what would be the free surface, so if this was all open water tank, if one could exist, this is all hypothetical of course, and maintain the same flow conditions. Energy grade lines are total head and are comprised of the velocity head, the pressure head, and the elevation head. Hydraulic grade lines are the piezometric head and is comprised of the pressure head and the elevation. Some tips for drawing. If we have a lake or a reservoir, the hydraulic grade line and the energy grade line are at the liquid's surface. Pumps are going to cause a rise in your grade lines where turbines cause a drop. For steady flow in a constant diameter pipe, the slope, which is the change in head over the change in length, will be constant. And that slope, the height of the energy grade line, will decrease in the direction of flow, unless, of course, you have a pump and then we'll have a jump, right? The power generated by a turbine can be increased by using a gradual expansion at the turbine outlet. The hydraulic grade line is separated from the energy grade line by a distance of velocity head, which is V squared over 2G. When a pipe discharges into the atmosphere, the hydraulic grade line is aligned with the system, so that would be the center line of the pipe. When the flow passage diameter changes, so will the grade lines. If the hydraulic grade line falls below the pipeline, the pressure head is negative and that can indicate potential cavitation. So if I've got here a little system with an open reservoir with a elevation from my datum of Z1 and the water is now moving through the pipes, I'm going to have that drop in head. I've got my two piezometric tubes. And the tube that is attached to the surface of the pipe is just going to measure the hydraulic head where the second tube here that's through the center of the pipe, that's going to give me the energy grade line or the total head. If I come over here to my pipe, just somewhere down the line with elevation two, I will have my piezometric head. from that center line of the pipe up to my hydraulic grade line. And that's going to be the pressure head plus that elevation Z2. And then if I add that velocity head, I'll get up to my energy grade line then if I draw a second reference line up here where my system started, then this distance is going to be that head loss. For example, we have a firefighting system here that has a pump that leads to a four inch diameter pipe with a nozzle and the pipe coming into the pump is six inches in diameter. The pump adds 80 foot of head, but we also have some head loss in our six inch pipe and four inch pipe. So that's given to us as equations for the velocity head. So the six inch pipe loses five times the velocity head and the four inch pipe loses 12 times the velocity head over the length. We want to find the flow rate through the system, the pressure head at the suction side of the pup and we want to sketch the hydraulic grade line and the energy grade line. I'm actually going to start with the sketches of the grade lines. So remember they both start at the water elevation of a reservoir and they're going to slope down until they run into this pump. The pump is going to add energy And then we're going to slope down again until we get to that nozzle. 
The hydraulic gray line has a little bit of a drop and then it stays a velocity head away. It jumps up and then it's going to come down here and I'm going to greatly exaggerate this. So my green is the hydraulic gray line and my red is the energy grade line. I've already been told that the pump adds 80 feet of head. So that's going to be here 80 feet that we're adding to our system. But everything else we're going to need some numbers for because I don't have any velocities, I don't have a flow rate, so I can't calculate uh, my pressure head or my velocity head yet. So let's move to the energy equation. For our energy equation, we need to set the point 0.1 and point 0.2 in our system. I'm going to choose the reservoir as point 0.1, and I'm going to choose my open jet as point 0.2. So because we have a reservoir, it's open to the atmosphere. Same with our jet. I do not have any velocity because it is a standalone tank. For elevations, I need to set a datum. So let's put it here at the pump elevation. So that makes my uh, elevation to one at 20 and my elevation to two at 30. I do not have a turbine, and my head losses are given to me as equations. So let's bring that down here. Head loss is equal to five, whatever the velocity in the six inch pipe is, plus 12, whatever the velocity in the four inch pipe is, to G. Our pump head was given to us at 80 feet. So plugging in this information, what I'm left with is velocity two, velocity six, and velocity four. I have three different velocities. So let's put all these in terms of one velocity so that I'm only solving for one velocity unknown. And we can use that with conservation of mass because we're dealing with uh, water, which is an incompressible considered fluid. Then my QN is going to equal to my Q out. So we will have V6 area six inch is going to equal to whatever my velocity two is and my area two. So that'll give us velocity six is equal to a ratio of the area at point two, the area of the six inch diameter times whatever it is that exit velocity is. Area is equal to pi r squared, so those pi's are gonna cancel, so we're just left with the squares. And we will have velocity six is equal to, the area two is three inch diameter, so that means the radius is an inch and a half squared. And the six inch diameter means the radius is three inches squared and then that'll be times whatever that exit velocity is. Exact same logic for the four inch pipe. And we will have 1.5 inches squared over two inches squared times the velocity at the exit two. Plugging all this information back into our energy equation, we have elevation 120 plus pump head 80 is equal to the velocity head that we don't know plus the elevation of 0.2, which is 30, plus that head loss that we've now calculated at five times V6, so that's the 0 0.25 V2 squared, all over 2G plus 12 times V4, 0 0.5625 V2 quantity squared, all over 2G. 
So that's our head loss. It looks extra weird because our head loss was given to us as a velocity equation, but that's all this mess is, is just the head loss that was given to us that we put into V2. So now my only unknown in my energy equation is V2. And we find that velocity to equal 29.704 feet per second. We now have enough information that we can find our flow rate through the system. So that'll be 29.704 feet per second times the area pi 1.5 inches squared and we need to convert 12 inches per foot squared. So that gives us a flow through the system of 1.458 cubic feet per second. So coming back over here to our energy gray line, we were told that our head loss along the six inch pipe is five times V6 squared divided by two G. And V6 is 0.25 of V2. So if I take five times 0.25 times 29.704 squared divided by two times gravity, then I have a head loss in my six inch pipe of 4.28 feet. I also know that the height between my energy gray line and my hydraulic gray line is the velocity head. And the velocity head is V squared over 2G. That comes out to be 0.856 feet for the six inch portion of pipe. We can come over here and do the exact same thing for the four inch portion of the pipe. So we end up with a much larger head loss, not surprising because it's a much longer um, portion of pipe of 52 feet. And then the velocity head difference between the energy grade line and the hydraulic grade line is just the V squared over 2G, which is 4.33. This is really small here, so I'm going to zoom in. Okay, we have the difference in head in the four inch pipe, but then we have this three inch nozzle. So we're going to have yet another head jump, uh, head loss when we get to that. So this distance right here is the 4.33 feet. And this distance right here is going to be that three inch diameter head loss, which is 13.7 feet. Okay, small picture. I even tried to make the picture bigger when I originally drew it. But the velocity head right here in the four inch pipe, that's the 4.33 feet. But then we have this last little jump here to get us down to the nozzle center of 13.7 feet. So that takes care of our energy grade lines and our hydraulic grade lines. We have our flow rate. So the very last thing we want is the pressure head at the suction side of the pump. So the pressure head is going to be this value right here before we get into the pump. So that's going to be the difference in height from the water elevation to the pump elevation. So we've got 20 feet there. And then we need to subtract that head loss of the six inch pipe, 4.28 feet. And then we also subtract the, uh, 
the velocity head of 0.856 feet and that gives us a pump head of 14.86 feet.